How do gang members react to a life sentence? It should be noted that these people know what they are doing. Therefore, they should be mentally prepared for the fact that sooner or later justice will catch up with them. People belonging to criminal groups commit all kinds of crimes, including acts for which they can end up in prison for life. Their reactions are not uniform. There are situations where only after the verdict is read do they realize what they have done. In today's video, we will look at the reactions of gang members who have heard a life sentence. Jaleel Smith Riley is a 23-year-old man who was convicted of murder and attempted murder. On November 16, 2013, in Cincinnati, Ohio, there was an armed robbery. Three attackers were involved in the situation, including Jaleel. What did the whole event look like? Portia Brooks and her boyfriend, Eron Martin, were sitting in a parked car when Jaleel knocked on the window, aiming a gun at them. The attack was of a robbery nature, so they were quickly searched. In a fairly short time, the attackers realized that they had nothing valuable on them. Jaleel aimed the gun at Iran's head and fired. After a moment, he aimed at Porsche and fired two more shots. The man miraculously survived, but 20-year-old Brooke died three days later in the hospital. Jaleel Smith Riley was not arrested until August 2016 three years after the whole incident. Interestingly, he pleaded guilty, thus avoiding the death penalty. When he heard the sentence of life imprisonment, he withdrew his statements, which shocked the judge and his lawyers. This was due to the fact that he could only avoid the death penalty by admitting to the crime. The moment he denied himself, the death penalty came back into play. The family of the deceased Porsche asked the judge to impose the most brutal of the available sentences on the accused. So it happened and Jaleel was sentenced to life without the possibility of early release. What was his reaction? He threw himself on the floor, apologized, and cried. He admitted that he made a mistake in 2013. After the verdict, Smith Riley expressed remorse and apologized for his act admitting that it was a mistake. His case highlights the difficulties associated with the legal system in matters of the death penalty and plea bargaining. Additionally, it shows the impact that such events have on the families of victims and the community. Smith Riley, although initially tried to withdraw his admission of guilt, was ultimately sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, which is a sentence rarely encountered in such cases. The complicated and tragic nature of this case sheds light on many aspects of the criminal justice system, including negotiation processes, sentences, and their social consequences. Lee Rios. This is a 35-year-old member of the Latin Kings gang who was sentenced to life. In his case, the federal court itself participated which means that Lee completely ended his brutal reign on the streets. Rio stood before the court on many charges, including extortion, conspiracy to commit murder, drug trafficking, and possession of firearms. Rios was a high-ranking gang member who gained fame throughout the United States during his career. The gang was involved in various criminal activities such as drug trafficking, contract killings, or arms smuggling. The case against Lee Rios began in 2018 when he was arrested as part of a large-scale operation aimed at the Latin Kings gang. During the investigation, evidence was collected indicating that Rios was involved in numerous acts of violence, including several murders and robberies. Many witnesses testifying against Rios were former gang members who turned him in to get a lesser sentence or protection. Overwhelming evidence eventually led to Rios being sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of early release. In issuing the verdict, the judge emphasized that Rios's actions caused immense suffering to many people, and he himself showed no remorse for his crimes. Rios's case highlights the serious consequences of criminal activity and the legal consequences for high-ranking gang members involved in brutal crimes.
Esteban Carpio is an American murderer serving a life sentence for the murder of a police officer. The situation took place on April 17, 2005 at the police headquarters in Providence, United States. The victim was Sergeant James Allen. Esteban was being interrogated about the stabbing of an 85-year-old woman, Madeline Gata. When the detective left the interrogation room to bring Carpio water, a fight broke out and Carpio shot Allen twice, killing him. He then jumped out of a third floor window and was caught after a 45 minute chase. During the hearing, Carpio appeared in a mask to prevent spitting and biting others. He had red eyes, swollen cheeks, forehead and skull area. Carpio's family accused the police of brutality. The chief of police in Providence stated that Carpio's injuries were the result of jumping out of the window and scuffling with the police. Detective Christopher Zarella of the Rhode Island State Police admitted to hitting Carpio three times in the face during the arrest, breaking his facial bones. An FBI investigation found that the police did not use excessive force. On June 27, 2006, a jury found Carpio guilty of murdering Detective Allen and stabbing Madeline Gada. Carpio's insanity defense was rejected, and he himself was sentenced to life without the possibility of early release. In 2017, Carpio appealed to a federal judge, arguing that he was wrongly convicted because he was mentally ill at the time of the crime and was unaware of the impropriety of his actions. The appeal was rejected. Abul Gallegos was one of three attackers responsible for the brutal murder of Simone Duran, which took place on November 5th, 2018, on Nile Street in Golden, USA. According to expert reports, the men first lured, kidnapped, and then shot the 28-year-old woman. Simone was shot 10 times before her body was burned. Gallegos was arrested about two weeks after the event, initially on another charge before formally being charged with Duran's murder. On January 31, 2020, Abel received a life sentence plus an additional 163 years of imprisonment. The motive for the crime, as claimed by the accused, was that Simona was an alleged police informant. Gallegos arranged to meet Duran via social media, then took her to a parking lot where the other gang members were waiting. The woman's body was found by firefighters at 1.30 a.m., who responded to a report of a brush fire. This tragic event not only brought legal consequences for Galagosa and his accomplices, but also deep sorrow and grief for the family and friends of Simone, who was a mother of two children. Her death not only highlights the brutality of the perpetrators, but also the immense loss for her family, especially her children, who had to grow up without a mother. This case also drew public attention to the dangers associated with being a police informant and the risks associated with using social media. It is a case that shows the dark side of organized crime and the impact it can have on individuals and entire communities.